Welcome to the StockMentor.com studios. I am your stock mentor, Brian Johnson. Entering a new week of trading, also the end of the month. So, a few things that we will keep our eyes on as we approach as we approach the new month. A lot of times, um, the uh, the markets like to make these end of months look, I don't know, quasi decent if they can at at all. So, uh, once again, we are in kind of a precarious little situation here. A lot of people wondering whether or not we're going to go up or down. And when that happens, it usually tells you that we've had a lot of chop or there is still some decision in the markets. And or basically, you know, there are times when even technical analysis makes you just step back and go, wow, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, this is usually where people make a lot of mistakes in this respect that they start to let their bias take over. If they can't read it in the charts, they'll just decide we're due for a bounce. We're going up on Monday. No, this thing's the world's in terrible, uh, in terrible condition. We're going down on Monday. <clears throat> and that's where they make their mistake. Um, the best thing you can do for yourself in your trading is to always let the charts just kind of tell you which way to go. Even if that means sitting on your hands for two, three days waiting for them to tell you. Uh, patience is uh, is a virtue when it comes to the market. So let's see what we have here. I've drawn in a few new lines, one of them being that blue line sloping down. As you can see, that is certainly the first place we're going to be looking for a potential bounce in the markets. That not only gets us above the blue line at this point, it also gets us above the 200 period moving average on the 60 minutes. So we still have some overhead resistance above us, even if we clear that. But that is certainly the first start to all of this. And this can actually be seen on some of the other indices. Uh, that, uh, that this blue line's already giving way. And that is over here. Well, let's take a look at the daily. You can see here that above that 10,200-ish area, above 10,250, gets us above this overhead resistance line here and also above the 20, the most important thing. We closed twice below that 20-day moving average. Am I convinced that we're going up? No, I'm not. I'm not. Padded doji, it is a potential reversal doji, but until I get confirmation of that, I really don't look at it as anything else but just another candle along the line of, um, uh, of this particular leg down. So um, if we do head down, I think a retest of this line or even the blue line is uh, very, very possible in the near future. So watch closely for breaks above the 20-day moving average early in the week if you want to trade this long. Otherwise, short is still below about 10,000 or so. The NASDAQ on a 60, you can see it below the blue line as well, waiting to see if we break 18.30 or 18, let's say 28-ish or so. It's a pretty good trade to the downside. Back above about 18.60 is your line to the upside. For the intraday traders, for those of you that like to swing trade the NASDAQ, you really need it to get back above. Now, see how we're trapped here with it, uh, below the 20 and above the 200? Sitting there, sitting there, sitting there, waiting for a break one way or the other. Hence, you must wait for a break one way or the other before you start looking for a trade. Back above about 1860, doesn't give you a bad entry on a long position to, uh, for the NASDAQ, maybe back into the 1900-ish area for this week. From a weekly, look what we did. There's that bearish engulfing we've been talking about now, looking to see if it continues to play itself to the downside. Uh, the big, big marks are really down here below 1790 and then again about 1700-ish or so back below those marks on the NASDAQ. I mean, um, bears are in control, but that is quite a distance away. Just keep those marked on your charts coming into the end of the month. SPX on a 60-minute. This is the one that broke the blue line. Now it has come back to to retest it. So you can see the break of it, hold at the 20, come back to retest the blue line. This is the first indice to really break the blue line. Now let's see if it'll hold the blue line. And this is the one to be watching. Anything back up above about 18 or 10, I'm sorry, 1085 or so uh, would be a potential look at the long side. There's so much overhead resistance that for more conservative traders, you want to let it get above 1095 before you start looking to get long here. And I know that is 20 points away, but that is for the more conservative, more aggressive. You can go in maybe above 1083 or 1085 and look for a play there and see if you can pull anything out of it. But 
to take, in, uh, take into account that, that it is a little bit more of a speculative play if you do that within the SPX. From a daily standpoint, we've also broken this blue line. Now we've come back to retest it. So the SPX behaving very nicely to a lot of the lines I have drawn in here. Keep in mind that we are below the 20-day moving average. So looking for pushes back above that, that puts you back above that 10, 90, 10, 95 area. Hence the more conservative trade for you uh, in the, over the next week. From a weekly standpoint too, putting in the bearish engulfing, touching the 20 knot, and, and breaking the 50. Man. Now the big move down here is right below 10.25, 10.30 ish, somewhere down in here is really a good get shorty moment. So if you guys are looking at taking some shorts in the SPX, uh, you can dabble on the way down. It's a quite a ways to 10.30, but uh, bigger picture, below 10.30 is really the place where I think the bears are going to start really pulling this thing down in a big way. VIX on a daily is back up. Notice how it's trapped between the 20 and the 50. Do you see how these trap betweens are coming into effect? This is what makes it difficult from a technical analysis standpoint to give you any kind of a direction. So instead of giving you my bias on the opinion, I'm going to simply be honest with you and tell you in the best, uh, in, 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 it's, the, it's best to just sit and wait and let the charts tell you which way to go. I'm not into blowing up my account and I'm certainly not in, into blowing up your account. So maybe I don't always give you the information you want, which is, hey, we're going up or hey, we're going down. But at the same time, I'm not going to allow my bias uh, let me let me just say this. I won't allow my pride to write checks that my body can't cash for you guys. So uh, we'll just be cautious. Waiting on the VIX. Now, <clears throat> overall, if you want to look at this as a TA, this is just a big channel to the downside. And if we continue our way up through this yellow zone, we don't have to get much above 32 before we kind of break out of this little channel that we're in. And that could lead to lower prices in the markets, higher fear in the VIX coming back up and into the more middle to upper range of this quote unquote red area that I like to talk about. From a weekly standpoint, same type of thing here. From a weekly standpoint, we're in this, let's call it the warm area, really hitting back in the 32, 33 area, then becomes the, the, the red area, the hot area where things start to really get fearful in the markets. That typically means a drop as well. Watch for this and as this for confirmation over the next few days. Apple on a 60 minute. Here's a nice little channel for you. How pretty is that? Where's your, this is your go long right here. Go long young man right above here about 272 on Apple. If we get up and over that area that's a good good entry for a long. Um, and then back below about I don't know maybe 260, 250. Duh. It's got to get out of this channel before I'm even interested in any kind of a trade on Apple. But it sure gives you a pretty picture, doesn't it? Apple from a daily. This looks like a pullback here. However, it's pulling back a little bit deeper than I would have expected it to. But it's not bad. It's not bad. We haven't even retested the 20 or the 50, so I'm not panicking by any means. I, like, I still like what Apple's doing here from a bullish standpoint. So I am not interested necessarily in shorting Apple in any way right now. That's for sure. From a weekly, still holding big blue waiting for that thing to break and once it does then maybe we get ourselves an opportunity to go short apple but there's so many other things you could be shorting out there apple would not be top on my list <laughs> there are way way too many other weak stocks out there that you should be uh, looking to short outside of apple however if for you guys that are stuck on apple and you only like to trade apple there will be opportunities to the short side coming in the near oh i'd say within the next few weeks FAS on a 60 minute uh, holding up here right now hard to tell what we're going to see come come Monday but we have a lot of overhead resistance here uh, below us is the 20 and the 2150 area which we have to be watching on drops to the downside from a daily standpoint we are trapped below the 20 and above this blue line once again tweener mode guys and if you look at this going back to about the end of May middle of May look at this we've gone nowhere straight across the board we ended this day here we ended this day here. We're, it, we, it's nowhere. So please, please, no swing trading on these uh, ETFs. Stick to day trading. Thank you. 
FAZ on a 60 minute uh, coming down to find support heavily right here around the 1470 area. So now breaks below about 1460 or so, 14 maybe even 50, I think could give you some at least a half decent trade to the downside back into the 1425 to 14 area for those that want to day trade this. Any breaks back below that could take us all the way back here to test the bottom. From a daily standpoint, you can see here we go, middle of May. This is where we ended this day. This is where we ended this day. We've gone nowhere. Please, no swing trading, all day trading for this right now until we see breaks above 18 or breaks below about 13 or so for you swing traders on FAS and FAZ. That'll do it for today's video. Listen, guys. If these videos are helping you, please post them to a blog, post them to your favorite place to hang out, Google Finance, Yahoo Finance, somewhere. Uh, if they're helping you, they can also potentially help other people. Uh, and that's what I'm here for. It's all free information. All right, if you enjoy this, please give my, new, uh, my subscribers newsletter a shot. A lot more lines are drawn in. A lot more indices are covered. A lot more is just a lot more. It's just a lot more overall. Well worth the 15 bucks a month. It's $15 a month, and you can, you can uh, quit at any time. So well worth the trial if you haven't tried it yet. And hopefully we'll see you uh, in the newsletter subscriber, which is next. Thanks, guys. Bye.